Hello, my name's Daniel and welcome to the Twisted Geek Podcast, episode number four. You've just got me this week, so you have to put up with this face or this voice, depending on where you're watching or listening. But let's get right into it this week. The first thing I want to kind of discuss and bring up is... It's now September, a couple of days into September now. I've got an idea which I'm probably going to pitch to a few people that I know. Uh, people that I've talked to a little bit on Twitter and on YouTube and things like that. And that is for October, which I am looking to try and do what I'm going to be calling One A Day October. Which is basically, you post up one video of whatever can, we want it to be. It could be a short, it could be long form content. You could do a live stream, whatever it's going to be. But you attempt to do one every single day throughout the whole of October. So that is 31 days of videos, which is a lot. And I understand that that is a lot of people can't commit to all of this. And this is why I'm going to be pitching to them already. So they've got a month to prepare anyone who wants to give it a shot. They might be able to batch record stuff and get ahead of the game a little bit. But to say, not only can we sustain doing that one a day every single day, which I know there's loads of YouTubers out there who do it and they do it for years and years and they grind away and it's absolutely amazing that they can do that. So well done to you guys. I've not been really able to do that before um, other than a giveaway I did back in 2020, 2020? Yeah, back in 2020 when I gave away the Dragon Ball Z calendar from Funko Pop. I did open each one of them, each every single day throughout the whole of December. Well, up to, of course, like, uh, Christmas Day itself, I think it's only up to 25. But yeah, that's the attempt, but not just to do the same video each and every day. Do some, like, manga hauls, some figure reviews, merch reviews, Funko Pops. Do the podcast, of course. And anything else in between, so try to mix it up, but keep the content fresh and keep it entertaining and up to date for all of you. So what do you think of that idea? Do you think that would work? I know I've seen people do it in the past on certain days of the month. Well, I've seen people do it in the past on certain months where they attempt to do this for like a week one video every single day for a week. I think I have seen it one or two for a month before, but I want to kind of pitch this to people and see. They don't have to do it. I'm going to post it up on Twitter soon uh, and see what they think and see if they think it's a good idea. If they can take part, they can take part. My idea as well, I would like to see, especially since the people I know are smaller creators. It would be nice to see how that would affect their channel. So for me personally, I'll be taking a screenshot at the very beginning, which will be the 30th of September. And then, so what I'll be doing is from the 30th of, from what I will be doing from the 30th of September, I will be taking a screenshot of my analytics. So like view, subscribe account, watch hours, all this kind of thing. And then doing the same again at the 31st of October, the very last day of, the, of that video has been released and see what the difference is. Does it help? Does it not help? Um, has people found it more interesting? Have people enjoyed it more? Because there's always content there for them to watch. Of course, we've got to try to make sure that the content, even though if it's 10 seconds or if it's 10 hours long, that it's still good quality content and entertaining content for every single one of you who've been subscribing. And on that note as well, there is only, what's it, it's going to be about five days left now. Yeah, about five days left now on the giveaway competition. And I am giving away a Dragon Quest figure as well as a Ochako face cloth, Fruit Kuchi Prize face cloth. And that will be getting drawn in the next few days. So on Wednesday is going to be the closing date. From there, I will pick someone from the comments and message them. Definitely make sure, of course, you have, definitely make sure, of course, you have subscribed. Get in touch with us. Hopefully, if you've left the links down there for us, I can actually get to you on social media, so I'll be able to track you. And then from there, get in touch and get this prize off to you. Maybe one or two little extras in the box as well for you. Just a way, my way of saying a big thank you for getting me to 500 subscribers. What I have been doing lately is as well, since I am a collector of many things, you can see I've got Funko Pops behind us, you know I collect figures and things like that, is getting back into MTG, which is Magic the Gathering. We stopped playing a few years ago. Uh, it was getting quite expensive when you're kind of looking into I to complete full sets. So I would get every single card in that set, other than when it came to a bundle, which was um, Zendikar, I think it was. They came with these really big, like, I think they're like full art islands and lands, but they're all mythics and they were selling for silly prices. Very hard to get. I managed to get two of the more common ones, which I then traded for a JS from. MTG Origins in order to complete that set. So stuff like that I would complete fully other than the them extra crazy ones which were just 
too crazy to get a hold of. I think there was something like 12 or something of these cards, maybe a bit more. And the more expensive ones up to three, four hundred pounds, so if you didn't could pull it, then you had no other chance. There was no way I was going to buy some of that. But anyway, getting back into it, uh, when we went holiday that week, it was, it was nice just to play a few games again. We started to get back into it. We bought one of the little uh, pre-release packs, which is, yeah. Let me see there, it's a little like, pre-release pack. And we just made our own, we said we were just making our own little um, pre-release pop party sent you with the three people who were playing. Not exactly the right amount of people, but it, it, was, it, was, a little, it, it was fun, nice savings to go. We got we're back into it, so we've got a couple of bundles just to try out. But one thing I'll say for sure, even though at the moment they do these full art lands inside of uh, the cards now, so we had um, back in, again I think it was stuff like Zendikar in the Strad. Where they had the nice full art lands which you could get in to give you in a bundle pack you give you a full pack of full art lands uh these ones now we also have a few different versions of these full art lands in the set which are really nice but the way they've changed around the set as well is completely different you used to get these booster packs which is your standard just booster packs i uh, used to pay like three I think about three quid used to pay for them when we're collecting them they're about four pound now but there's so many different sets there's there's draft Draft boosters, which is, I think, basically the normal booster because you just have 15 cards in it. You have set boosters, which are now only 12 cards. Uh, but you have a few extra different bits in there, chances of getting into there. Uh, you then have collector's boosters, which are like 20 quid, 25 quid per pack. But they're all foils, I believe. Uh, with at least two rares in there, possibly a better chance of a mythic as well, a good mythic. But it seems to be all foil uh, stuff in it. Uh, on top of that, I think you've got, what was that one? There's, there's, I'm sure there's another one, but inside of that, you get these full art cards. These are like basically just general art cards in them from the set packs, and there's like 80 of them cards in it. Then you've got the alternative cards they do now. So, in some of them, they do three alternative cards. So, you yeah, might have one called Counterspell, and it just uh, sort of might have an orb on it in the normal standard colours. Then you have another one which has got this border around it, uh, which is really nice, and an alternative art version. And then on top of that, you'll have the original they had with a nice, say, blue border around it and then black and white, which looks cool. So, so many different sets inside one set. And I'm, I say, I'm a collector. I like to collect everything. I like to, when I get something, I like to collect the whole lot for it. And this time around, we're basically just getting little bits here and there. I can't, I'm not even going to try to let my brain kind of click into that annoying collector's kind of stage because there's no way I can collect all these different things when some of them are silly expensive as well. And there's no way I'm buying booster box after booster box after booster box. And I think we used to get them when they were about 75, 80 uh, for the booster boxes. And now they're going like 95, 100 plus. And then if you want to a, a, a collect that booster box, um, that's like 200 pound plus. So it's like, no. I don't know if I actually mentioned as well, one great thing about being away. I don't know if wouldn't say it was great, but was, uh, the place we're staying there was barely no signal. The Wi-Fi was almost non-existent. Sometimes you get on, sometimes you couldn't. But the upside to that, I managed to catch up on a lot of manga that I would have otherwise not read. I would have sat there and suddenly watched anime on my laptop or put Crunchyroll on the fire stick or something like that. And that was great, just to kick back every single night, just read one or two manga after the little one was bare and everyone was settled after a nice long day of going out to safari parks or going around the new about different towns in the area, the fairy festival, things like this. It was actually really nice to catch up and manage to finally start Fist of the North Star. I used to love that anime back in the day. One of the, one of the very first kind of ones I saw. I didn't even see it all. Uh, I think I saw one of the movies originally, which... One of the movies are maybe the first couple episodes of the series because it kind of matches in with that first manga volume. The downside of that now, which I mentioned before, is that space. I'm running out. Completely running out of space. Uh, I've got a big pile of manga, about 20 volumes, which just sitting next to me figures. I can't get them actually physically on the shelf anymore. The shelf is actually full. Apart from like a couple of small spots here and there which I've got ready for the next volume in that certain series to go in. Space is definitely, definitely a bigger issue than sometimes you think is I've moved things around the loads. I've reorganized things to make more space. But now, in some ways I'm kind of thinking, do I call some new stuff? Cut back on some of the stuff that like some of the, maybe for example some of the pop finals I had to get rid of some before which I wasn't, knew I could never complete the sets and even just getting some more and it just, like certain ones I just kind of didn't give you that kind of wow factor. Could do that, could do that with figures. Kind of don't really want to get rid of stuff in that sense. I like to keep me things, but needs must so sometimes you just gotta do what you need to do. And that's that one big pile of manga that's all over the place and then all of a sudden you'd see in all these shots of them just having some 
Funko Pops behind us, you'd be seeing figures and everything just all piled all over the place and it'll just look an absolute mess. Do you have a big upside as well coming in October, not only trying that one in the October, is Bleach should hopefully be released then, one of my favourite series, a lot of nostalgia there, love that series. Last I heard, possibly Disney was going to get a hold of it, and if Disney got a hold of it that would mean potentially there wouldn't be weekly simul uh, simulcasts. It would be a case of, like, Disney would normally do for stuff, they would just, like, they would, when they've done other animes on there, it would just be a case of waiting for it all the way done, and then releasing the whole lot at once, so people can binge watch it, which would be, ah, oh, there'd be so many people pirating that. If, that, if that's the way it ends up going, there'd be so many people pirating that series, because you don't want to be waiting, what, the series could be essentially 24, 40, 50 episodes long, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how many episodes it's going to be, the original Bleach was 366, this is one more arc, so, a decent size arc could be about 50 episodes and do you want to wait like a year a year extra to watch it come on no one wants to do that but if they do get if disney does get a hold of it hopefully they realize yes people like the binge watch stuff but we also like especially in the anime community we would like to get our anime weekly so that we can keep on top of it all sometimes when you fall behind on a series a little because it's something else series that really kind of grabs your attention it's then good to go back and go oh yeah i've got three or four episodes i can just binge through and see what happens it's just awesome but at all times not when you anticipate in the series when you're really looking forward to a series coming out one of the big ones of course for me lately was the rise and the shield hero season two uh i've just actually i've just bought the the, the latest volume of the manga there's that <laughs> i've just bought the latest volume of the manga there as well for that but i think that was only about 12 30 episodes it wasn't it wasn't a really stupidly long series i don't believe I wouldn't have wanted to wait all that time and then go and binge watch it. It was nice to see it each week so around the time as well. There was lots of different series coming out while I was watching, so most days I had something new to watch, which kept you going all that time. But speaking of which, because of my kind of taste now, I used to watch lots of uh, slice of life anime. I used to watch stuff like um, Shuffle. I remember watching Shuffle when I was younger and stuff like that. I literally watched, used to watch any kind of anime I could get my hands on. Uh, but now these days it's normally action adventure isekais definitely isekais I love me isekais some of the stuff that's came out at the moment doesn't quite interest us but luckily enough since Crunchyroll's been taking a while lots of different places getting light licenses for lots of other places uh, I've been they've been updating loads of new animes on there so even old animes from a while back like the one I just watched there was The Sacred Blacksmith and that is I don't know how old that one is but it's, you can have to tell by it's a little bit older and they put the full lot straight onto there, so it's definitely been out for a little while. I know I need to say Devil is the part time. I never saw that before. I know season two is coming out, but Crunchyroll actually does have the full season on there now as well, so I need to kind of watch that. I just need to get a little more organised and see what I can fit into places to watch different things. And I'm kind of going on a lot of a tangent here, really, under. So let's, let, 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 we'll wrap that episode, this episode up there. Hopefully, I have some more special guests coming in the future. I do have a friend who was um, heavily cultured, shall we we'll say. When he's, a, when he's a bit younger and he's really heavy in anime, he now collects a lot of manga. I'm hoping that he's going to be uh, able to come on, and I'm hoping he's going to be able to come on at some point and discuss and just have a chat about his old taste, his taste now, why he doesn't really watch too much anime anymore, but how he really likes reading his manga. I think that'll be really nice. Of course, we're going to see Cat back on soon enough after she watches some more of The Promised Neverland, which when we're away as well, I did show some of the people who are away with that and one of the persons actually have watched the whole series so you don't make it them on as well to see if uh, what what their thoughts are for it and i think at some point as well we'll have to come back to show and see how well he's doing with one piece i believe he said was it like 350 episodes he was last time uh when i spoke to him the other week there as well after he had a few days off i think he's up to 400 and odd now 460 470 possibly so he's definitely kind of really grinding into the episodes so I'd like to see what his thoughts are on that as he goes further into it. And of course this time I probably won't have the mic shoved right into his face. I'll, I'll never be able to figure out a slightly better setup. My name's been Daniel. This has been the Twisted Geek Podcast. Hope you all have an awesome weekend. Catch you in next week's episode. Cheers.